All right, you guys, here is part two of my interview with Lydia Meggs. Lydia is the sister of Olivia Plath. Olivia Plath, uh, of course, from Welcome to Plathville and Ethan Plath have announced that they are getting divorced. But does this mean that we're not going to see Olivia Plath anymore on future seasons of Welcome to Plathville? Or is there some TV in the works for both Olivia and Lydia? Lydia has just recently gone through a breakup. Who's she dating? Um, where is she working? And also, I've always had this question, like, how have the Plaths made all their money? I mean, they bought Isaac, their son, a plane. They, like, own multiple homes. And what about the Meggs family, Olivia Meggs? So are they rich? You know I go there. You know, We ask everything on TSFS. So here's part two with Lydia Meggs. Um, you know, were you supportive of your sister? One of the skeletons that's been a big deal, and I think most people believe your sister, is this story of Kim Plath, the multi-level marketing and using Ethan's credit card. Um, yeah. Were you supportive of her telling that story, or did you give her any advice about that? What were your thoughts when that came out? Yeah, she actually did talk to me about that. We had a pretty long conversation. I think that was like what we just mentioned earlier. I think like my sister felt really misunderstood there. Um, <laughs> I know the kind of things that Kim did. So I'm not surprised and I wasn't there. So it's just my opinion, but I do believe that it's absolutely valid because I know that she's done stuff like that before. And my mother was in, was in young living and I know a lot of women were, and that stuff happened all the time. So I would not be surprised. Yeah. That was like, I think everybody was shocked to hear that, you know? And yeah. Okay. Was that as big a source of tension between your family and theirs? Because Ethan, Mariah, Micah, I mean, they all seem to now say that basically Olivia saying that on camera was like the beginning of the end. Like they wanted nothing to do with Olivia. Is that true? Was that kind of the catalyst? I mean, I wouldn't say that was the catalyst, but that was a huge factor in it for sure. It was like there was no turning back at that point. Hmm. Um, you know, you mentioned that you and Mariah were close. You know, she seems so sweet on the show trying to find herself you know I like want to like give her the biggest hug I feel like she's searching so much for for something yeah. you know um what happened why why are you girls not close anymore I feel like you could use each other's support more than ever yeah I know I used to think that too uh when Olivia got married Mariah was a lot like me and I feel like Olivia wanted to be like Olivia wanted that that source of energy in her life and so she latched onto Mariah and because I was at odds with my parents at that time. Um, and I didn't realize this, but Kim and Barry thought I was a bad influence on Mariah too. Um, it was pretty much like Mariah had to ditch me. And I mean, she was only like 15, 16 at the time. And that's been really hard for me to process, but it's really helped me realize that she was still a kid. You know, she was just doing what she was told to do and what she thought was right. And she needed somebody. And as hard as it was, I can look back and say that I'm glad that she had Olivia. You know, maybe they weren't good for each other all the way. Maybe they were toxic for each other, but... I didn't have that growing up. So I look at Mariah fondly and I'm glad that she did. You know, I feel like yeah, it's still hard to talk about, but I hope that I hope Mariah's happy. She seems, well, I don't know what she seems like because yeah, they all still have me blocked and everything on social media, which but that's fine. But what Olivia have said um, from things I've seen, I, I, I hope that she's happy. We're just on very different pages now. Um, I know that she's gone back to religion and I have not. Um, and whatever floats your boat, that's what makes her happy. But that is not me. So I just don't think we'd get along anymore. Also, I have my sister's back and things have gotten really messy there. So I feel like that's going to be the determining factor. Yeah. Yeah. It's too bad. And I, you know, I feel for Olivia and Mariah because Olivia, Mariah, Ethan, Micah were so close when the show started. Yeah, they were. And they I'm... Were. As I'm assuming, I mean, does Olivia, Olivia has no contact. She kind of said that on her TikTok, right? She has no contact with any of them, not Micah, Mariah, correct? That is correct. Yeah. Yeah. I know when Micah visited a couple months or whenever that was in Minnesota, um, he wanted to see her, which I mean, I think is kind of a big for him. Not going to lie. I mean, no matter what it was, but yeah, I know that the class, and I remember this from, Growing up with them, they're they're avoidant. They don't talk about things. So I can understand why it'd be hard to just see Micah and not not talk about anything that happens. Like that's there's such a big elephant in the room. I'm so, are you is Micah blocked you? Because Micah seems a lot like you. I mean, he's like drinking, he's partying, he's like at strip I mean, not that you're at strip clubs, but you know, he seems like <laughs> I mean, but you know, 
we've seen like he he uh, seems of all you never know <laughs> okay well no, i want to not i want to go no, with you Micah, i think really? mike is pretty even keel I would think, you know, he would be the one that would see through. Because, I mean, he's lived out here in Los Angeles with two other guys that clearly didn't grow up like him. I mean, he's in the modeling world. You know, he just seems to me, it's too bad that you're blocked, the, you know, because I would think he would see through a lot of it. But I mean, he's going to protect his family at the end of the day. I mean, I only say that with the class. I know exactly what's happening because I've seen that with my family. So it's just like a mirror. Like, I just, I, I, I understand. I do. You know, when you talk about the family being toxic, right, Kim and Kim and Barry and, and what happens with the kids, what, like, I, okay, I hear that a lot, but what is it? Is it the, what is so toxic? Is it like the lack of education they gave those kids? Because they mm. basically stopped educating them at like eighth grade. Um, yeah. Is that it? Or is it this like, that they kind of run these schemes? Like, what is so toxic? I just think it's the dysfunction um the values that they put in the kids what they teach the kids to value the way the parents act um the way that like when I I I feel like there's that's such a long tangent like dysfunction like there's so much within that um like one of the things I remember very clearly from the class is that they like never read the bible together and I could be wrong no I did spend like all my life there but like whereas my family did like every single night and that always puzzled me like huh like they're not reading the bible but they're religious like where did like, where did they line up and i remember that you know when they started traveling and doing music they <laughs> they, they 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 loved that and they made that a lifestyle um but like the relationship suffered with the parents you know like i remember mariah telling me things like oh this happened and i don't know how to feel about this but this is my life now so I just have to go along with it i'm gonna make the best of it I feel like that question is so deep because there's a lot within dysfunction. And I also don't want to project anything on them because that wasn't my family life. It was just things that I saw. But one thing I will say is every time they came and visited us, Mike and Mariah would always be like, I wish your mom was our mom. And me and Olivia would always be like, no, you don't. She is so Uh different around you guys. And after Olivia got married, they still said that. And it was only like a year and a half ago where like, apparently they, they said that they hated my mom. And I don't know what happened. Maybe they... It was probably just like an oasis in the desert then compared to Kim, because I never wished that Kim was my mom. <laughs> no, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, you'd spent enough time with Kim, huh? You were like, no, I'm good on her being my mom. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I just said that. Not that she's a bad person, but she just never seemed like a mom to me, ever. Well, I'm curious. I mean, because obviously Ethan, Olivia has been on this podcast a couple of times. You know, Max um, Kahlschmidt, who used to date Mariah, has been on this show. I mean, he probably had the nicest things to say, I guess, about Kim and Barry. But is is Kim even, is she a nice person? Maybe. I think she's pretty, I mean, I was a kid, you know. I haven't seen her since I was 18. But I don't think she's a bad person at all. I just think she's trying to find her way. And I honestly just think there's a lot of things in her childhood that she never worked through. You know, I think that really is... I think that determines like a lot of her decisions and stuff. And again, I don't want to project. That's just like an insight that I have, but I don't, I don't know. Mm. Um, You know, you've had a challenging year, obviously being on television, you know, connecting again with your sister and then the passing of your brother was really mm-hmm. shocking. How were you, were you speaking to him at the time of his death? Um, how's that impacted your family? How are you guys doing? It, it's so heavy. I lost my dad when I was in high school. When you lose a family member, it's just... It's so devastating. You know, it's very hard to work through the emotions. So how are you guys doing? I'm sorry to hear that, first of all. Um, I don't really know. I guess that's something I haven't really processed yet because you would have thought it brought us together. But I mean, it brought Olivia and I together, but it didn't anyone else. It was a shit show. Mm. But no, I was not talking to him at the time. I hadn't, I hadn't, took, I wasn't allowed to speak to him before he passed away. So I hadn't spoken to him since... 2020 so that was I think the hardest part I don't know I guess I need to go to therapy for that no I'm sure you will someday I mean it's it that's a lot to process so after he passed like were you and Olivia invited to his funeral did you see your parents were you guys able to mourn it all together Olivia and I ended up sticking together because we were not welcome there um but there was no way that we were going to miss that so it was a very I've never been to a funeral like that. I never, never hope I have to again. And I never thought it'd be for a family member. 
I think we're able to mourn a little bit, but it was also like we had to have our guards up just because there was, and I know that might sound selfish, but there was just so much that happened that was just so messed up. And I hate to say that, but it was my parents. Um, yeah, I, the, that was a weird family reunion. I hope I never have to experience that again, but yeah, I, hmm. It is a long story, Sarah, and it is really hard to talk about. Well, we we don't we certainly don't have to talk about it. I just you know it it had made headlines. It was really sad, and um, you know you kind of hope that those moments like bring you guys together. Like maybe your parents realize like how you know precious all of you guys are, and can you find a way to you know communicate? And maybe you don't have to be best friends, but to to be supportive of each other, you know. But yeah. Maybe in another life. Mm, it's so hard. Does it bring up a lot of emotions? I'm sorry. Does it bring up a lot? Yeah. You're good. Yeah, it does. It was pretty recent and it's just a lot to handle. But hey, it's brought Louie and I closer. So I'm glad that I have a sister that cares about me and has my back no matter what out of it. Mm. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you've had to go through that. It's really, really hard. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um. You were obviously you were on this season. Uh, can you tell us where you and Olivia stand? I mean, Olivia, I feel like is such a star. Uh, like mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan, so I I love watching. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I love watching her on TV. Yeah. I mean, is TLC already courting you guys? Do they want you back for this kind of like you know end of an era type season? Like, are you going to be back on TV? Is Olivia going to be back on TV? Where do you two women feel like you're going from here? Well, I can't spoil that part. You have to see, oh. but we're doing great. We really are doing great. Um, yeah, the, I think this year is going to be great. There's a lot of changes happening for her and definitely for me. You know, I just moved and uh, just got out of a very long-term relationship and have some breakthroughs and she's having breakthroughs. It's just, it's it's really great for both of us. Like we're at very similar parts of our lives, yet so different. And I feel like we look up to each other in different ways. I'm just really thankful for her. I haven't had family in like five years and it's just nice to have somebody in my corner again that I am familiar with that I grew up with. Um, wait, no, the the long-term relationship, was this the guy that we saw on the show? Did you guys, is- oh, Yes, you- it was. Oh no, yeah. how long were you together and, and how long have you now been single? Um, we were together for almost four years. Mm. So it was pretty long. Um, that's what happened with my family. It's like I had to, he was normal. I had to choose between, um, uh, cause I wasn't allowed to date. It had to be courtship. And I was just like, absolutely not. So it was like on my 20th birthday that I ended up getting kicked out and the whole thing started and Olivia, you know, who reached out to me back in 2022 and she didn't even know what happened because it was just, it was a mess, but I've been single now living my best life. I don't have any shade. That is no shade to my ex. I hope that he's doing well. We were just not good for each other. And it was just very toxic for me in a lot of ways. Um, But at the end of the day, he really enjoyed meeting my sister. And I know that she enjoyed meeting him and some people in your life for a season. Um, But I've been single now for a little bit. And I'm loving, loving this chapter of my life. Like it is, I just wake up and I cannot say this. I wake up every day and I'm so grateful and I'm so happy. And I've never been this way before. And I'm riding my wave, riding my wave. <laughs> um, okay, well, tell us about your life, Lydia Grace. So, like, you know, you you go out on your own at 20. You you know, you've reconnected with your sister. But what are your hopes and dreams? I mean, are you going to college? Is there a career path you want to pursue? Um, like, do you have a favorite hobby? What What is your life like now? Yeah, I mean, I'm traveling a lot, which is nice. I really enjoy traveling solo. Um, I am going to college. Um and none of the women in my family have a college degree. And so I know that might be a little bit like, hmm, I need to work on that, like like a little flex, but I really want to be the first woman to get a college degree. That means a lot to me because I was never encouraged to go to college. And I love doing the opposite of what people want me. Obviously, here I am not married, don't have babies and, you know, <laughs> all of that, but... I have a lot of goals and aspirations. Um, I wouldn't say like I'm too focused on career right now because in so many ways, I still feel like I'm 18 being exposed to the world. Um, And I don't, I feel like people look at me different too because of that, you know, especially when they hear about my childhood. And I feel like Olivia, you know, we were actually just talking about this the other day. I think she feels the same way sometimes, but 
in so many ways, like she wants to be the person that people don't look at as sheltered because she's a little bit embarrassed about the way we grew up. And like, I am too, obviously, but like, it's made me who I am and I'm not ashamed of it. There's just, I wish I, I could have been different and I could have had a different childhood, but there's a lot of values that I still have. And I really want to go to college. I, I want to get a degree. Um, I would love to get a career in the future, but right now I'm just focused. And I know this sounds so shallow, but I'm just focused on having fun and meeting people. Like I've met so many people where I live now and I'm just, there's just always things to do. I, I, I'm so happy and grateful to be where I am. I've met so many beautiful people and done so many things in the last couple months and Olivia is always welcome where I am, but like, I also want to drag her into that, but she's kind of going through her own thing and like maybe starting to settle down, which is kind of sad to me because I thought we could like be single and do all the wild things at the same time. And, you know, just bond that way. Hey, maybe we won't, but at the end of the day, <laughs> she has, she always has a place here. If she wants it. <laughs> okay. Well that's okay. So like you girls have each other. What are you doing for the holidays? Like, do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Do you celebrate Christmas? Will you and Olivia do that together with any other family members? Like, what do you have planned for the holidays? Yeah, we're not really welcome at our families for holidays and we've never really like liked either just cause it's, it's rough, but I'm doing my own thing this year. Um, I still have some friends, thankfully on the East coast and so does she. So at, we, we will be together this year for the holidays. I don't think for Christmas, but also like so much has happened. And I know this sounds kind of crazy. So much has happened in like the, literally the last month with both of our lives that we're just kind of reeling. It's like, Oh, like how's it almost holidays. So we both haven't made that many plans just because it's been very stressful and there's been a lot going on. So we're like trying to make last minute plans and figure what we're going to do. So I know we're going to be together for Thanksgiving and I'm really glad about that. And then we'll see about, we'll see about Christmas. <laughs> oh, and now I do feel like I've seen pictures of you and Olivia and some of your other sisters. So like, do you, do you speak to some of your other sisters? Like uh, at some um, points or is it really just the two of you? It's just Olivia and I, I mean, our other sisters, it's not like they completely cut us off, but there's no relationship because of religion so like one of my sisters is about to have a baby you know like I I'm sure I'll hear about the birth she might send me a picture or two um she's my younger sister when I got married last year but like it was like relationship wise there's no relationship we're like we're decent like at the funeral we all reconnected a little bit and that was kind of nice but it was like just for a day so it wasn't like there was a relationship but with my little sister's I know that Olivia and I both wish that there could be, but there can't just because they don't like have access to phones and social media computers. Like my parents, like just are very, very guarded about that. Mm. Um, what do you hope for your sister? She is single now. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. okay. If you were waving a magic, I, I don't know. Is she like, is she dating or is she taking some time? What's she up to? Like, <laughs> she is single. She's single ready. Okay. Yep. If you were setting her up, who do you want her to be with? Like, who do you think is her ideal person? Uh, I honestly feel like that is a very open-ended question because she's only been with Ethan and that's a very extreme type of person. So I feel like she doesn't know what it's like for someone to treat her good. So I feel like it could be like anything. Like she doesn't know, right? Um, but I feel like she needs to take her time, not rush into anything. That girl has worked hard to get where she's at and she needs to just focus on herself right now. We're trying to, we're trying to remind her of that, Sarah, but sometimes she just gets so ahead of herself and she has a big heart. And Oh my God, tell, yeah. her, tell her she has to take, take her time and date. I mean, I kind of want to set her up. Like, I feel like she needs to date an actor or a celebrity. <laughs> I don't know. That might be like going from Ethan to like, I don't know. Another, <laughs> that might be like another <laughs> form of toxic, but I don't know. I mean- but she, like, to, first of all, I feel like she has to stay on TV. Like, I, I hope you guys are getting some sort of continuation of the show because I feel like you guys make the show part of it. You know, I mean, the plots are interesting to watch. Yes. There's no doubt. Oh, like, I mean, sure. <laughs> Kim and Barry are really fun to watch. Um, mm. But, yeah, I want her to, like, I feel like she maybe needs to date a celebrity. I don't know. Do you? Okay, so we want her to stay single a couple years, really. Honestly, she needs to. The world is her oyster. Why would yeah. she settle down? There's so many wonderful people, men and women, or whatever you want to go by out there. Do your thing. Just figure out what you want and don't make a commitment yet. You know, she's only 20, almost 26. That's still really young, in my opinion. Like, why? But that's also just me. You know, like, I, um, 
I'm like a wild horse and I don't like to be fenced in. And she's not like that, you know, she, and that's part of the reason why she stayed with Ethan so long. She's very loyal and she loves really hard and she like, she wants a relationship. So I don't know if I'll be able to keep her single, but we're going to try. <laughs> keep her single. I mean, okay. I take it. Do you read anything about Olivia, Ethan, your family? Like, do are you, cause, cause as much as I like your sister and, and, you know, have always tried to put a positive, you know, take on her on this show. I mean, there are a lot of people who who feel like she's a narcissist that, you know, did Ethan wrong, that, I mean, of course, right? Like, she's in the public eye, so you're going to have people that love her, and there are people that really hate her. And I'm, I'm just wondering mm-hmm. if there's any rumor out there that you've heard about her that you would like to clear up mm-hmm. since you are her sister. I mean, the only thing I know is that she didn't cheat on Ethan. I mean, I don't really pay attention to the rumors much. I would be lying if I said I didn't get like DMs like saying how relationships toxic like people that are just angry or just like don't understand like the and maybe I'm a little bit opinionated and biased but like I just I just knew they weren't going to work out and I after my journey well I'm still on the journey that sounds really I don't mean it like that but after what I've been through like I want her to figure out freedom and like what she wants like why would you stay in a marriage if you're not happy and not only is that not fair to you but it's not fair to Ethan so you need to figure out and evaluate and get your priorities together because I'm not saying it was loveless. I think that they did love each other, but not in the, I want to stay with you for the rest of my life. I'm going to commit to you type of way. Like that, that, that wasn't them. Like, I just think they liked the idea of themselves. So I wasn't trying to like convince her not to get married, but I just know that she didn't cheat on Ethan. And I know that, that the credit card thing is definitely true. Um, just because I witnessed some of it firsthand. Other than that, like, I don't know about the rumors and uh, I don't know if she ever wants me to clear something up. She can do it herself. She can stand up for herself. <laughs> yes. It's really more people label her as a narcissist, that she's oh. narcissistic and, you know, she's, mm. um, you know, trying to take down Kim and Barry and she has separated Ethan from his family and she tore him away and she broke up the family. It's more like accusations like that, yeah. you know? Um, and I think because Ethan is more of a passive person on camera, it's hard to say like, I don't know. Did he? I mean, I know he did because he's been on this show and he said that he had no relationship with Kim and Barry for a long time because of their actions. So, but I think somehow that gets lost. People seem to think she's driving their separate or, or drove their separation. But I guess now he's back connected with Kim and Barry. I mean, I think there's validity in that, right? Like, I know when I first reconnected with her, like, I wasn't scared to say that I thought she was like him because I've always thought that she wasn't away. And I think that's why they were attracted to each other. I think, like, misery loves company. Like, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. But I think that's where she was at one point. And there's also some things that I didn't see. Like, she just wanted a mother. She didn't have a mother. You know, Kim was motherly in a way towards her, which I, I would have gravitated towards that too. Like, you need that as a young girl. But I do think that there was some truth in the fact that Um, They both want to control. They're both A-type personalities. And I just think that they clashed heads. So that's why I said that. But narcissist, I don't think she's a narcissist. I do think she used to have narcissistic tendencies, though. Um, I feel like the word narcissist can be overused, so I hesitate to use that word. I don't even want to say Kim's a narcissist, but I think there's narcissist tendencies. I think everyone has the potential to be a narcissist. Some people actually have some characteristic traits of narcissists. Uh. (sighs) Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. I think narcissism is like a word that's way overused now. Um, But I guess what would be, like, what do you mean? Like, were Kim and Olivia similar in what? Like, more like they wanted their way? Like, it was kind of like you needed to do what they wanted? Is that? I think it was more like their ideas were the greatest. Um, They wanted to be in charge. They both got satisfaction out of being the leader or the one in charge um and maybe that was like something that was deficient in their childhood that they never felt like validated enough by that maybe they always felt like they were dependent on somebody or looked down on and so that was an overcompensation I don't want to diagnose it I don't know but that's just what I saw um all right I do have like two last questions for you you've been amazing shed so much light on you know (laughs) such a you know such a fascinating world you know I mean I think that's why the show is so successful you guys you know, you're brave to show your truth. And it's, it, it's so hard the way you grew up and trying to figure it out and then on camera. But I do have a question. Like, is your family rich or are the Plaths rich? Because it does seem like you guys all have a lot of kids. I mean, the Plaths are like, they bought Isaac an airplane. I mean, they seem to own multiple homes. Like, how did the Plaths get all their money? I need to know this, Lydia Grace. Like, <laughs> like tell me. Oh, that's a tricky question. I'll keep on top of people's finances. I do know, though, that in order to have that many kids and be successful, like raise them properly, 
Like I know like the Plas put a lot of their money towards music growing up. That's what they valued and they wanted their kids. And like that costs a lot of money for music lessons. And that's where my family put their money to. Um, I didn't realize this, but yes, my my family was very well off, even though my mom didn't work because my so, dad was successful. Okay, so but, how, tell me, but how was your dad successful? Being a preacher or was he like a businessman before he's a preacher? Like I'm always, how does- He was a business. That's what people don't understand is my parents were very corporate before they decided to become redneck country in the middle of Amish country. And I died. I, it beats me. I don't know why they wanted that. I just think that they thought that religion should be a big part of life. And it was that, that was the Bible Belt of Virginia. Kind of the same thing with the Plaths. I know that Barry was very successful. He was more corporate. And then like, I know that he met Kim in Florida and like they kind of did their own thing. And I know it was like more of Kim's idea to become that way. So I know that they were well off and I know that they put a lot of their money towards music, but like how they made their money and all the ins and outs of that. Also MLM, like do you think, like, did your mom, I guess, can you really make, maybe I need to launch an MLM here. I mean, did they, did they really make <laughs> Don't do that? <laughs> I mean, so do you think that, like, were your, was your mom successful in her MLM? <laughs> no, my mom wasn't, but also my mom, how do I say this nicely? My mom also didn't really take time to play the system. Like, my mom homeschooled all of us, and Kim didn't really, well, I take that back. Kim didn't really homeschool. The kids really taught themselves. We had a little bit, like one or two more kids in the class and my mom homeschooled us up to high school. And then we had to homeschool ourselves through high school. But that being said, my sit like the class are a little bit more closer together in age, like versus my siblings. So my mom was still busy homeschooling all my little siblings by the time that I was in high school. So like she had her hands full. Also, she was a preacher's wife and like she was always at church doing stuff, whereas the class didn't really go to church. So it was a little bit different. Also, the Plast didn't make money through music because they really wanted to be bigger and they were traveling back then. And, you know, they got paid and stuff like that. I never thought about finance this part before, but yeah, I just recently <laughs> realized that my my family was well off. They had to be. <laughs> well, yes, all these religious families. I mean, it's like, okay, they all had to have made money somehow because they're supporting 10 children. Like I said, you know, you see they don't live extravagant, the Plaths on the show, but I mean, they do have a lot for the number of kids they have. So you're like, what did Barry do? Yeah. That he was... yep. Okay, so your dad had like a full corporate job. Like, did he, what did he work for? Like a tech company or something? And then they decided they were going to be. Yeah, he worked, well, he worked for DuPont originally up in Delaware. And then he went, like, he started working for GE. So yeah, it was, it was very corporate. Wow. Okay. So now we know a little bit about how these religious families um, operate. <laughs> like, how are they buying a plane? Like, what are the flats doing? Um, oh my gosh. Lydia Grace, thank you so much for being on the show. For It was so fun. Please come back. I would love for you to come back. Like, just like even talking about more, even not your sister and the show and Ethan and all that's gone down. Like, I would love to just even hear more about growing up in this religious I mean it's because it does happen a lot in America it's amazing how many families are raised like you guys and I actually even just saw a story on the news the other night that more like even more parents are homeschooling their kids um and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but it seems to I be don't know as long as you have homeschool as long as there's mandatory I'm a I'm a big advocate there needs to be mandatory check-ins from CPS there mm. has to be. That's not fair to the kids otherwise because there's stuff that goes on that you don't know about. There, that, That's just like there should be like state tests and like state things like to keep up and like you should have to get a high school diploma. I'm just a big advocate for that because I just feel like I missed out on that. But I guess families also have their rights. And if you put religion into everything, you're bound to have some bad apples and things that happen. But thank you so much for having me, though. Oh, my God. Uh, do you want people to follow you on social media or are you working on any project you want to promote? We always love, you know, promote away. That sounds great. Um, <laughs> honestly, I'm not on social media too much these days. So there's just so much going on. But yeah, if you want to follow me. What's my username? <laughs> um, like oh, I think it's underscore underscore and then it's Lydia Grace underscore or something like that <laughs> i'll tag you um lydia thank you so much it was amazing amazing Sarah, it was great meeting you i really appreciate it <laughs>